Hi everybody, welcome back to uh, my YouTube channel. Today I have kind of like a Frankenstein style video where it's going to be a bit all over the place, um, but the theme of this is just covering uh, the roster shuffling that has been happening in professional skateboarding. I have four um, pros that I wanted to talk about. Um, and the first one, I'm going to use a chopped up live stream of me pretty much reading the description of Noah Clothing announcing Louis Lopez. And the reason I'm doing it this way is I just think it's funnier if I put in the live version because the outrage that I felt while reading this description um, is <laughs> kind of better just in its raw form. I don't think that I'd be able to replicate it again, so I'm putting it in um, this way. Noah is fortunate to have a roster of team writers who align with our values of raw individuality and pure expression. You just put out the most fucking straightforward and basic promo. You have fucking him waiting on 8mm to catch the train, being like, I'm so stoked to ride for a New York-based brand because it's different. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! Skating gave me the strength and confidence to always trust myself. At its very core, the culture of skateboarding challenges the world. Yeah, it's really challenging to the world when you're trying to walk through the sidewalk and there's nine fucking benches stacked on each other and there's a hole in the ground where great used to be. It encourages independent thought, rewards new ideas, and welcomes change. Is that why you guys are making this horseshit that is exactly the fucking same as all the other horseshit that is dropping out of every company's asshole? Behold, Noah Clothing, the first company to have the balls to put a fucking film burn in a skate video. But recently events were set in motion that quite frankly, I could not believe. A young man made a decision that I could never have expected. To leave Volcom? Yeah, it's it's inconceivable that Louis Lopez, one of the most sought after skateboarders in the game who also has millions of dollars, would decide to leave this kind of whack clothing company that he rides for. Unfucking believable. Nobody has taken a bigger risk. He had everything to lose. I could have never imagined this would be a real conversation. We love skateboarding but never thought of ourselves as skate in the traditional way. But once again, a skater went his own way and reminded us there are no rules. Louis is not even the first guy to skate for Noah. Like, there are other skaters that ride for Noah. What is he talking about? Noah literally already has a fucking full-length skate video with 261,000 views, featuring the team of Bobby DeKaiser, Chris Millick, Coles, Hjalte, Kyoto, Nick Michael, Quinn Batley, and Troy Gibson. And none of these guys skate for the company anymore because probably the owner is insane and put out a t-shirt during BLM that said, Racist Friends Bad. Uh, nice job on that one, bro. Once again, a skater went his own way, a way that other skaters have already gone, yes. And I'm not even knocking Louie, but this, the, like, the way that this guy is framing it, and he's acting like this, like he reinvented the fucking wheel for changing clothing sponsors and reminded us there are no rules. He likes us and what we're doing. Louie's idea was actually the most skate thing you can do. Okay, so writing for your company is the most skate thing anyone can do. You know, he's like trying to compliment Louie on being brave, but simultaneously talking, like acting like Noah is the most hardcore shit ever and how dope his brand is. Like when Louie decided to skate for Noah, that was the most skateboarding decision he could have possibly made, homie. The most skateboarding decision you could possibly make is writing for a company that sells a quilted crew neck for $300 with a picture of a horse on it. In all seriousness, though, like, the most skate thing that you could do is ride for a company that sells products for skateboarding. Does that make sense? Like, skateboarders aren't spending $200 on a pink cardigan. Like, this is some Jason Dill type shit. Um, so, you know, th none of this is Louis's fault, by the way. Louis can do whatever the fuck he wants. In my opinion, he's earned that right 
as a skateboarder. He keeps all of us entertained with his skateboarding. He's one of the very few people in skateboarding these fucking days that's at his level of fame that still skates. Most people that have the amount of money, clout, and fucking swag that Louis does barely even skate, and Louis still skates. So Louis could skate for Al-Qaeda apparel, and my opinion of him would not change at all. Um, and also, he probably didn't ask for this fucking psychopath um, to attach this self-indulgent monologue underneath his skateboarding video. Get the fuck out of here, dude. He challenged what being skate even means. He challenged what being skate even means? To most of us, this probably reads as an extremely stupid fucking sentence, but it's actually genius because if something doesn't make any sense at all, it is impossible to refute. So I can't say that Louis hasn't challenged what being skate even means because I don't even know what being skate even means. Who is this guy? Okay, he's 50, that explains it. I've been transported back to my teenage self, which was a really long time ago, by the way, and actually feel understood again. What? And of course it was a skater who gave me that gift. Welcome to the family, Louie. I wouldn't have even had like a harsh reaction to Louis Lopez writing for Noah Clothing had it not been for this paragraph right here. Okay, let's see what Louis said. I'm happy to be writing for people that truly care about what they do, not just making quality clothes, but the factories and materials that are used and how they affect the environment. I think that's just the best thing ever. And Noah has great stuff to wear, but if you want to get spicy, they've got that too. Hey, you know what? I think we could have just done with Louis' statement. Louis like, it's nice, they're good quality clothing, it's good quality clothing, and they don't enslave people. What we didn't need was Brendan Babenzine to open his fat fucking trap and try to drown all of us in his sewage spill. We are not a sustainable company, there's no such thing, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try, because if everyone tries, we're all better off. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you guys made a store and only put five pieces of clothing in it. Skateboarding has the ability for you to reevaluate and interpret the entire world differently. How many times is he going to fucking harp on the same shit, say the same thing in a different way? It's a free-thinking, freewheeling pursuit at its best. All walks of life are welcome. Why don't you put a girl on your team or something then, bro? I love when people talk about that, how inclusive skateboarding is, and they just have a team full of dudes. It's his company. He can do whatever he wants. I'm not saying you have to put anybody on your team. Like, but don't don't then write some shit about, like, skateboarding's for everybody, man, while you do nothing to, like, make skateboarding more open and accessible to other groups of people. You know? That shit is so fucking stupid. The only person in the world who'd look cool in this is Tony Soprano. Because he loved that horse that he had. Look at this J.C. Penny ass flannel. You wouldn't dare, Louie. You don't have what it fucking takes, Louie. Practice cloth? What are you practicing in this thing? <laughs> Croquet practice, perhaps? If you actually look at the clips in the video, um, you would have no idea that he wasn't still skating for Volcom or that any change had transpired uh whatsoever because he's indistinguishable from the way that he's looked for like the past three or four years like the clothes fit him the exact same way the cuts look the same you wouldn't be able to tell at all if the video wasn't titled welcome to noah louis lopez because louis kind of a rich guy like louis got a couple uh couple mil banging around in his checking account like he's got a massive shoe for converse he's been in the game forever he used to be like sponsored by rockstar and shit so louis has money so naturally louis is kind of on some rich guy shit you know um, he's doing what Mark Zuckerberg and other tech guys do, which is from the outside, you look at them and you're like, wow, look at this humble king, Mark Zuckerberg, wearing Adidas slides, a pair of jeans, and a t-shirt. He's just like me. Even though he looks like he's going to 7-Eleven, this is like a $1,600 outfit, probably like a fucking $700 Celine t-shirt, and those are like fucking $900 jeans. Louis doing the same exact thing. Uh, we'll call it zucking. Louis is identical to the way that he's looked for the past couple of years, except now the price of his fit has quadrupled. Overall, I mean, Louis is a king and he can really do no wrong, um, but I am giving him a little bit of shit for skating for Noah 
because um, he personally went to my local and took a steaming dump all over the entire thing. So yeah, Louis Lopez, you and your $800 outfit should go ruin somebody else's skate park and leave mine alone. Thank you very much. Um, okay, next thing that uh, I want to cover is um, Luan skating for Kariuma. Luan's actually not on the uh, website yet uh, for some reason. I would have thought they'd be on top of that. So to see his uh, black and white Scientologist Kariuma mugshot, you have to go to Kariuma Skateboarding's Instagram page. And here it is. Um, Luan looks like sh he looks like he's had a pretty rough go of it over the last four or five years. I don't know why I censored myself there. What I was trying to say is that Luan looks like shit. So he looks like he's been at war, but I think the only battle that uh, Luan has been participating in is uh, the war against Jim Beam. Uh, <laughs> and I think for a while there he was losing. So anyway, yeah, he's looking pretty haggard. Not to give him too much shit, but, um, you know, this is the face of a man who is left with no other options. Some people are, like, pissed or, like, disappointed like this dude. Like, please tell me that this is a joke. You know, the thing that made Luan famous and the thing that kept eyes on him, technical proficiency and his really insane pop. Like, during the period of time where, as a skateboarder, like, it was still interesting to watch, like, slow motion videos of people, like, popping the shit out of a kickflip on flat ground like Luan thrived in that era. Um, the problem now, I think, for Luan is that the set of skills that set him apart and made him unique from other skateboarders are now no longer nearly as rare as they once were. He's got pretty much no creativity to his skating whatsoever, and there's Luan fans that are going to be pissed at me, but, you know, go ahead and watch the street part that he put out um, in 2022, Lost and Found. This shit is rough. The filming and the editing style is almost exactly the same as what you'd expect from a YouTuber skate part like Johnny Geiger. Um, he does ledge tricks. Um, he pushes around a lot. He can pop high. This shit just ain't that interesting anymore. It's it's not cutting it. So there's comments like this where if you plug it into uh, Google Translate, Nike lost a lot. It seems that the support wasn't enough for Luan. Like Luan is the one who walked away from Nike. Um, I bet there are several Nike athletes keeping an eye on Kariuma. Soon Kariuma will be able to face Nike. Yeah, in the epic fucking battle of two um, skateboarding shoe titans, um, Kariuma is on the verge of defeating Nike. I get it's, like, disappointing for people, like, with a skater that they once, like, really enjoyed. Um, and Luan is kind of an OG, so I'm not even trying to come at this shit, like, super disrespectfully or anything. But the reality of the situation is that, like, Luan's style and his approach to skateboarding is pretty boring in the year 2023. In my opinion, I shouldn't say the reality of it. In my opinion, it's pretty boring. I think that that impression, though, is also reflected in the fact that, you know, when com a lot of shoe companies are downsizing their skate programs, Nike included, Luan is just w a t one of the kinds of dudes that is going to get cut. Luan skating is pretty much exactly what an outdoor barracks banging video would look like. Um, the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, it really looks to me like he is pretending to be skating a skate park. Like, the thing that he would like to be doing is actually just skating the fucking barracks right now. So it makes perfect sense that he skates for barracks shoes. I certainly don't judge um, Luan for skating for Kariuma, for example. In fact, I think that, you know, it kind of makes a lot of sense. Um, I think as skateboarders, we tend to get a little confused when we see a company like Kariuma dumping money into skateboarding because we know that we're not going to buy their shit. Um, like they're wasting their money because skaters won't buy their stuff. But I think Kariuma's intention is to sell skateboarding um, to non-skateboarders. And I think that strategy is evidenced and reflected by um, the way that they've formatted their roster. Um, like they sponsor all contest skaters and Instagram skaters. And the reason that they want to do that is because they want to paint a picture of skateboarding that is really digestible. Um, they want like the perceived edge of skating to the public, you know, where you still get like the cool action sports side of it, like Luan doing a slow motion kickflip on an Instagram reel on flat ground. Somebody who wants to buy some skate shoes that doesn't know, know anything about skateboarding sees that, and they're probably going to think like that's pretty cool. Um, so from that perspective, I think Luan skating makes perfect sense. Um, I think it would translate 
translate better to Instagram than it would like a YouTube video part. I've been sugarcoating this a little bit and trying to like take a really practical approach to this, but I think, you know, if I'm gonna put it bluntly, Luan is fucking washed. He's on a team with Scapegoat and Garrett Jenner. Um, things are not looking good. His street parts are bad and he doesn't do very well at contests. So he's perfect to put on the Karyuma Instagram grid. Um, and I think that that is uh, the nicest thing that I could really say about him at this point. Uh, next thing that I have to cover is Tom Cox uh, skating for Crooked. I think most people are pretty enthusiastic about it, though. The response seems to be um, positive overall, um, which makes sense. Crooked is like one of those board companies that whenever there is a skater um, who is a free agent that has um, not a perfectly like traditional style, like Tom Knox is like a quick foot wizard genius type guy. It just makes sense that you like throw, you kind of just toss out crooked. Um, so the way that we got here, here's what I understand um, from the situation. Some of this might not be completely accurate. I haven't fact checked it, but this is just like stuff that I've heard. So Tom Knox used to skate for Isle, like a small company um, in England. And then the plan was they were going to start Atlantic Drift skateboards, um, which actually some there there is it got so far as to where there was a drop um, that had one graphic with different colored plies at the bottom. It's a cool graphic. You're probably familiar with the Atlantic Drift videos. It was going to be that, but skateboards, um, and that ended up falling through because one of the guys um, that was fundamental and crucial to the operation ended up getting sick. That's what I heard. So Tom Knox was then left without a board sponsor. So the the rumors that I heard of the companies that he was considering, Limousine, Sci-Fi Fantasy, and April. And Crooked was obviously involved in that mix too because that's what he ended up skating for. Like Bear Paw River says, makes total sense thinking emoji, um, hands emoji, fire emoji. Tom is like a little bit of an older skater or what you might describe as a veteran skater. He lives in England. He has a family. He has, f I think, three or four children at this point. Tom Knox, nothing crooked about the guy. He's a straight shooter. Straight shooting his load and the last update that I found about the amount of children that he had was this Thrasher interview where he said he had three, but that's not that recent. So for all we know, there could be five or six of them. So Tom Knox is going to need a board company that is going to consistently um, provide him with income. What he needs to do is find a company that'll consistently provide him with fucking condoms. You know, he's not going to probably choose to skate for a company like Limousine that's been around for like a year and a half, two years. Um, or something like Sci-Fi Fantasy, who only has one pro on the roster. He's going to look for something that is stable and reliable, and nothing is more stable or reliable than Tom Knox's sperm count. Tom also lives in England, so he's not going to be fully in the mix um, in the way that might be required of a company that like has a lot of pressure on it to put out videos. You know, Limousine has pressure to put out videos. That's how they do their stuff. Um, so it, as cool as it would be to see Tom Knox in like a, you know, a really like modern, hip, and cool skateboarding video, um, it doesn't really make a lot of logistical sense. Um, so, you know, as far as what I think about it, uh, it's fine. It's like super safe. I completely understand the logic behind it. The graphics are like totally, totally chill. Um, obviously like Gons is pretty much untouchable in skateboarding. Um, it's just like, they are just a little bit bland for my taste at this point in like my skateboarding consumption, you know, um, crooked graphics for the most part, you rewind to 2002 where the, when the company was founded and you look at the graphics then, and you look at the graphics now, they pretty much look identical, which is fine. Crooked represents stability. And that's something that a lot of people are into. Um, I used to like crooked a lot um and i used to think that they were really cool but like skateboard graphics and skateboarding in general is kind of like fucking 
pornography. When you watch your first porno video, it's like really graphic. There's like tits, dicks, and ass slapping into each other. And you're like, oh my God, this is fucking animalistic and like disgusting. And then you get a little bit more into it. And then the next thing that you know, you've got 17 tabs open um, and you're watching a video of seven dudes pissing on somebody. What I'm trying to say is that Crooked is kind of like softcore and um, I'm just sitting here all day looking at fucking skateboarding. So um, I need something a little bit edgier. It's a good fit. Um, I fuck with it. Um, it's just like a tiny bit not that exciting. But, um, you know, when you got four kids, I don't think that um, excitement is uh, your number one priority. Okay, for this next section, I'm just going to use the explanation from my deleted Violet video um, about why I think Cater uh, left Baker for Violet um, and to address the questions that I've been getting about why I took that video down. Basically, I touched on some pretty sensitive shit in that video and I think it was really important that I was accurate and correct about everything because of the nature of the content that I was discussing and I think that my assessment may have been a little bit flawed. So, um, and I, I also, you know, even if I was right about the stuff I was saying, I also am not really sure that I'm the right person to say it. Um, it dove into some like, you know, racial ethical things. And you know what, sometimes you just gotta look in the mirror and be like, maybe I am not actually fucking as smart about this shit as I think I am. So um, I abandoned ship on that one and that video will remain locked away in a secret compartment. Why would Cater quit Baker to join Violet? Because I think people look at Baker um, and they see like a perfect situation. Baker has been able to achieve something that almost no other skateboarding company has, which is both coolness and consistency over a sustained period of time. Um, Baker's been around for 20 years and they have pretty much been the shit for 20 years. I don't think Baker is the coolest company in skateboarding, but it's by no, I don't think anybody would be even remotely embarrassed to skate for Baker. All the videos are good. The graphics are unobjectionable. They juggle like a roster of OGs and prospects um, in a way that nobody else can. And I think one of the big reasons for that is Reynolds. He has not really changed that much for the last 20 years, you know, both in his physical performance. Sure, he's declined a bit. That's he's a human being mentally. Um, he seems to be the same. I think, you know, if you're in charge of something, your company is like kind of a reflection of who you are as a person. And he's managed to remain more or less the same, but staying flexible and adaptable um, and picking up new skaters. So Reynolds has done a really, really fucking good job with Baker. So I think that it's kind of a surprise when a skater leaves Baker because almost nobody does. There are very, very few destinations out there that I think would be more desirable than Baker. So there's a, a Route 1 interview that he did where he talks about... I don't know, I just wanna... I wanna build something too, like, I wanna build something up, like, like, everyone, you know, like Andrew did for Baker and stuff, like, all that stuff. Yeah. Reynolds built out Baker, and that's like, that's his empire, and something that Cater wants to do himself. So, if you look at it from that lens, it's like, Yes, Baker is, like, it's a sure thing. It represents stability, and it's cool. Um, it's maybe the best skateboarding company of all time. But no matter who rides for Baker now, Baker is Baker. It's solidified. It's a constant. It has an aesthetic. They have a style of video. Everything that happens through Baker will happen Baker style. So if you're a skateboarder that has the, the power um, and the influence that somebody like Cater does, you might feel potentially a little bit limited by skating for a company that you have absolutely no control over. So if Cater's looking at it that way and he's like, you know, I want to be a part of something that is more malleable that I can use to represent myself and have more control over the, over the way that I am viewed and have more control over the way that my skateboarding is put together, you know, through edits or through graphics, whatever. Cater is aware of the fact that he is a big enough skateboarder to potentially pull something like that off. 
And I think that that is the primary reason that he wants to go skate for Violet because Violet is tiny. They don't even have a professional skateboarder on the team yet. It's just a bunch of am slash flow skaters and Cater would be the first pro. So once Cater lands on there and he's the biggest name by far, it's going to be very Cater centric. There's only so much you can do just by skateboarding, you know? Um, you do your best to do the coolest tricks that you can, and then you send that off into the editing bay, and something comes out of it. That, and this is all projection, by the way. I have no idea if this is what he thinks. And something that comes out is like, you're like, that's not, that's not how I want to be seen, or that's not the vision that I had for my own footage. Um, he probably looks at Violet and the videos they're putting out, and he's like, yeah, that kind of aligns a little bit more with you know the ideal version of myself that I want to put out there. I'm guessing that's what's going on, which uh, this is a big risk, of course, you know, you're leaving a sure thing to try something relatively um, unproven, but I do respect Cater for trying something different. I think a lot of skaters in Cater's position wouldn't do that and they would elect for the safest option, but Cater's putting himself out there and he wants to maximize his potential. So shit could go left with Violet. Um, I think that's entirely possible that in like the next couple years, the whole brand just sort of flops. It, there's like a temptation to dramatize this situation and act like, you know, because Cater left Baker, that if Violet fails, then this is like a massive mistake for Cater um, by not staying on Baker. And you know what? I, I think the reality of the situation is Cater is going to be totally fine. Um, even if Violet does go under and it turns out to be a flop, like, Unless Cater royally fucks up um, in the next couple years, um, which he probably won't, um, he's still going to have tons of sick board sponsors that want to have him skate for their company because he's so young and he is absurdly talented. He is one of the most valuable assets in all of skateboarding. Um, and just because he quit Baker and then Violet failed, that's not going to change that. The only way I could see Cater potentially like landing himself in some actual trouble is, um, first of all, if he doesn't put the fucking bong down, dude, he is smoking so much pot. Um, his brain is like a little raisin probably. Um, <laughs> but, um, the actual like concern that I would have is he doesn't have the best history, um, with sponsor loyalty. He quit like as this slip on colorway thing was rolling out, which obviously if you're Vans, um, who I have no sympathy for, Vans can kiss my ass, but obviously if you're Vans, you're not really stoked that your rider like quits simultaneously with their shoe dropping and then was like skating other shoes. And then even a while ago on Baker, um, he was skating an anti-hero board once randomly, and I think he did that because it was like a Supreme collab, but Cater has a history of like kind of seeing what he can get away with, um, and it never felt like there was any definitive moment um, in this whole Violet Baker thing. It just sort of seemed like he decided to stop skating Baker boards um, and was just skating Violet boards on his Instagram page. Um, he doesn't really have like the most upfront or honest way of going about switching sponsors. So I see that as like Cater kind of likes to flex his muscle in the skate industry um, and see how far he can take things. Um, and so far, it seems like it's working out fine for him. There may come a time in Cater's career where people aren't so willing to take a chance on him. Um, because maybe his skill declines or something, and then some of that shit might catch up with him a little bit, you know? Down the line, companies might think about it like, maybe we don't want Cater because, you know, we might have him on for like a couple months, and then we have like hundreds of pro Cater boards, and then he just decides that he wants to go skate for Foundation now for some fucking reason. Um, so. Yeah, that could be the only thing that um, might end up biting Cater in his ass. Anyway, um, I want Cater to be successful. I'm not rooting against him. Um, his attitude seems like it's pretty shit sometimes um, based off of some stuff that I've seen of him. But, you know, um, he is a kid and he has like a ton of money and it's probably difficult to control yourself all the time. So um, I hope uh, he doesn't shit the bed.